हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर चिरंतन रावल फ्रॉम ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज सिलवासा दैट इज देयर इन यू टी ऑफ दादरा एंड नगर हवेली टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल ग्लाइफिलेट साइकिल विच इज इन द पेपर कार्बोहाइड्रेट मेटाबोलिज्म सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट एस सी what we are going to learn in this module our first target is to understand the biochemistry of the glyoxylate cycle why there is a need to glyoxylate cycle to understand the role of glyoxylate cycle in gluconeogenesis do you remember this gluconeogenesis it's a new glucose formation to understand the relationship between the glyoxylate cycle and the tca cycle how this glyoxylate cycle and tca cycle is related how their metabolites are important then we will study the function of the glyoxylate cycle in various organisms cellular reactions are interconnected a discrete relationship exists between various biochemical pathways which eventually lead us to the homeostasis of the body if this interrelationship is not there then what happens harmony within the metabolism may not be observed we should first understand the basic of a glyoxylate cycle the requirement of a such a pathway why we require it what are the basics of the glyoxylate cycle how this cycle allows the organism to grow on a two carbon compounds for example acetyl coa this is very important in the case of the bacterial systems they may come across the two carbon compounds in their environment and if this pathway is not there then it may be a crucial for them. two enzymes play an important role in glyoxylate cycle that is isocitrate lyase and malate synthase smith reports the enzyme isocitrate lyase in the extract of the pseudomonas species while kohnberg and coworker reported the glyoxylate cycle as a glyoxylate bypass the glyoxylate cycle is observed even in plants archaea bacteria protist fungi and nematodes in a nutshell it is present in most of the organisms however the presence of a glyoxylate cycle in animals remain controversial there is a controversy between whether the animals do have or not the key reactions our conversion of is isocitrate to glyoxylate and succinate by enzyme isocitrate lyase and other is conversion of glyoxylate to malate by malate synthase introduction the glyoxylate cycle is an anapleurotic pathway of the citric acid cycle which permits growth on two carbon compounds like acetate by bypassing decarboxylation step of the citric acid cycle two enzymes play an important role in the glyoxylate cycle that is isocitrate lyase and malate synthase smith and gonsalves reports in 1954 regarding the enzyme isocitrate lyase in the extract of pseudomonas species on berg and coworkers reported the glyoxylate cycle or glyoxylate bypass the glyoxylate cycle is observed in plants archaea bacteria protist fungi and nematodes however the presence of glyoxylate cycle in animals remains controversial it was believed that vertebrates were not capable to perform this cycle because there was no proof for the presence of its two important enzymes that is isocitrate lyase 
and malate synthase. However, some research proposes that this cycle may present in some of the vertebrates. Glyoxylate cycle allows the microorganism to grow on two carbon compounds. Glyoxylate cycle play an important role in plants during seedlings. During the seed germination, plants converts store lipid molecule into carbohydrate using glyoxylate cycle. During seed germination, photosynthesis is not operating, so role of glyoxylate cycle is crucial. The glyoxylate bypass allows plant seed to stock up energy and carbon source from fat. This stored fat is used for the generation of glucose during the germination. It was believed that glyoxylate cycle operates only inside the peroxisomes of fungi and plants. However, it is no longer valid. Enzymes of glyoxylate cycle are found in cytoplasm as well as in the peroxisomes. Overview to glyoxylate cycle This figure gives an overview of glyoxylate cycle. Oxaloacetate present in plant mitochondria is converted to aspartate. Aspartate then crosses the mitochondrial membrane and transport to glyoxysome. Aspartate present in glyoxysome is converted back to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate reacts with the acetyl coenzyme A to form citrate. Citrate undergoes isomerization to form isocitrate. That is a reaction of TCA cycle. Isocitrate lyase cleaves the isocitrate to form succinate and glyoxylate. Glyoxylate reacts with the acetyl coa to form malate. This reaction is catalyzed by malate synthetase. The pathway is essentially a modified version of the citric acid cycle. It is made modified form of the TCA cycle. The glyoxylate cycle make use of five enzymes used in the citric acid cycle. So there are certain enzymes which are being used both in citric acid cycle as well as glyoxylate cycle. They are citrate synthase, acotinase, succinate dehydrogenase, fumarase and malate dehydrogenase. These are used both in TCA as well as glyoxylate cycle. The glyoxylate cycle sidesteps the two oxidative decarboxylation steps of the TCA cycle. The TCA cycle involves the decarboxylation step where the carbon has been removed in the form of carbon dioxide. These two steps are omitted over here. It diverts the isocitrate through the isocitrate lyase and malate synthase reaction. This bypass allows simple carbon compound to be used as a sole source of carbon as well as the biosynthesis of biomolecules. Conversion of isocitrate, glyoxylate and succinate by isocitrate lyase. The first two steps are similar to the first two reactions of the TCA cycle. The glyoxylate cycle sidestep the two oxidative decarboxylation steps of the TCA cycle. It diverts the isocitrate through the isocitrate lyase and malate synthase reaction. Acetyl-CoA enters the glyoxylate cycle at two steps, but loss of carbon in the form of carbon dioxide is not observed. In this reaction, isocitrate is cleaved into succinate and glyoxylate by the enzyme isocitrate lyase. Two steps of the TCA cycle is skipped, that is, to dehydrogenation and decarboxylation steps are bypassed which prevents the loss of two carbons. These carbons are saved in the form of glyoxylate. In this reaction, isocitrate is deprotonated to form succinate and glyoxylate. E. coli isocitrate lyase contains lysine-193, cysteine-195 and histidine at 197 and 356 position which forms the catalytic active site while histidine 184 is play an important role in the assembly of tetrameric enzyme. Conversion of glyoxylate to malate by malate synthetase. Malate synthase catalyzes 
the reaction between glyoxylate molecule and another acetyl coenzyme A to form malate. The final step in the glyoxylate cycle involves the regeneration of oxaloacetate. So one complete turn of the glyoxylate cycle forms one succinate molecule by utilizing two acetyl CoA molecule. One of the intermediates of this cycle is glyoxylate provides the basis for the name of metabolic pathway. Succinate generated using the 2 acetyl coenzyme A molecule can be used to restock the TCA cycle or it can be used as a precursor for amino acid biosynthesis or carbohydrate biosynthesis. So this cycle acts as a link between catabolic and biosynthetic activities. It enables cells to utilize fatty acids or two carbon compounds such as ethanol or acetate as a sole carbon source. Role of glyoxylate cycle in gluconeogenesis. The seed include a major store of oil in the form of triacylglycerol. It provides carbon and energy during germination of seeds and growth of seedling. During germination, triacylglycerol is cleaved to fatty acid by lipase. These fatty acids are then rooted to specialized structure called peroxisome. Fatty acid undergoes beta oxidation to produce acetyl CoA. Proximal acetyl CoA is directed to gluconeogenesis through glyoxylate cycle. Glyoxylate is converted to malate by malate synthase in the glyoxysome. Oxaloacetate is formed from the oxidation of malate dehydrogenase. This oxaloacetate is utilized for the gluconeogenesis. This can be very well understood from this diagram. Similarities with TCA cycle. The pathway is essential, a modified version of the citric acid cycle. The glyoxylate cycle make use of five enzymes used in the citric acid cycle. They are citrate synthase, acotinase, succinate dehydrogenase, fumarase and malate dehydrogenase. The glyoxylate cycle sidestep the two oxidative decarboxylation step of the TCA cycle. It diverts the isocitrate through the isocitrate lyase and malate synthase reaction. This bypass allows simple carbon compound to be used as a sole source of carbon as well as the biosynthesis of macromolecules. Why coordinate regulation is required to control the glyoxylate cycle? As we note that coordination between the all the system is important to maintain the harmony within the system. Isoenzymes of the enzyme which are common to TCA cycle and glyoxylate cycle are observed in the living system. They are specific to organelle that is one specific to mitochondria while the other specific to glyoxysome. Glyoxysome are not found in plant tissues at all time. They build up in seeds during germination. Three intracellular compartments carry out the transformation of dicarboxylic and tricarboxylic acids. It includes mitochondria, glyoxysome and the cytoplasm. Metabolites are continuously interchanged in these three compartments. Oxaloacetate from the mitochondria is passed to the glyoxysome in the form of aspartate. Aspartate then crosses the mitochondrial membrane and transport to glyoxysome. Aspartate present in the glyoxysome is converted back to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate reacts with acetyl-CoA to form citrate. Citrate undergoes isomerization to form isocitrate. Isocitrate lies cleaves the isocitrate to form succinate and glyoxylate. Glyoxylate reacts with the acetyl CoA to form malate. This reaction is catalyzed by malate synthase. Malate is transported to cytoplasm. Malate is oxidized to form oxaloacetate. This reaction is catalyzed by the malate dehydrogenase. Succinate produced from isocitrate is transported to mitochondria. It that enters in the TCA cycle. 
it is transformed to malate and then oxidized to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate is converted to hexose via gluconeogenesis. It is then transported to growing roots and shoots. It engages four different pathways. It involves fatty acid breakdown to acetyl-CoA that is in glyoxysome, the glyoxylate cycle, the TCA cycle and gluconeogenesis. So overall, it involves different pathways and shares some common intermediates which necessitates that this pathway are regulated and coordinated together. Coordinate regulation of glyoxylate cycle and TCA cycle. The enzymes of the glyoxylate cycle are represented by the presence of glucose or another more rapidly utilized substrate. In anaerobic condition, anaerobically respiratory control system suppresses the citric acid cycle and the glyoxylate cycle under anaerobic condition. Glyoxylate and citric acid cycle shares some common intermediates which necessitates that these pathways are regulated and coordinated together. One of the crucial intermediate is isocitrate found at the branching point among citric acid and glyoxylate cycle. Coordinate regulation of glyoxylate cycle and TCA cycle. The intermediates that acts as an activator of isocitrate dehydrogenase also act as an elastic inhibitors of isocitrate lyase. Under the condition where the metabolism yields is fast and provides sufficient energy to keep the concentration of anapleuritic molecules low leads to the inactivation of the isocitrate dehydrogenase. When isocitrate lyase is gets free from inhibition and isocitrate enters into the glyoxylate pathway, there it is used for the synthesis of amino acid, carbohydrates and other cellular materials. Functions of the glyoxylate cycle in various organisms. First, let's start with the plants. It occurs in the glyoxylum. Glyoxylate cycle play an important role in plants during seedlings. During the seed germination, plants convert store lipid molecule into carbohydrate using glyoxylate cycle. During the seed germination, plant converts store lipid molecule into carbohydrate using glyoxylate cycle. During seed germination, photosynthesis is not operating so role of glyoxylate cycle is crucial. It enables plants to use acetate as a carbon and energy source. Now let's talk about fungi. In fungi, glyoxylate cycle plays an important role in pathogenesis. It was observed that concentration of isocitrate lyase and malate synthase is significantly increased during the pathogenesis. Exact correlation is not understood. Now, what is the function of glyoxylate cycle in bacteria? Many bacteria have enzymes of glyoxylate cycle and citric acid cycle in the cytoplasm. It enables them to grow on acetate as their sole source of carbon and energy. Glyoxylate bypass the ability of bacteria, yeast and other microorganisms to utilize acetate as a sole source of carbon for growth. It plays an important role in pathogenesis of bacteria. It was observed that concentration of isocitrate lyase and malate synthase is significantly increased during pathogenesis. We discuss about the bacteria, plants, fungi. Similarly, in animals, the acetyl coenzyme A produced from fatty acid degradation cannot be converted into pyruvate or oxaloacetate. Although the two carbon atoms from the acetyl coenzyme A enters the citric acid cycle, they are both oxidized to carbon dioxide in the reaction catalyzed by isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha glutarate dehydrogenase. So animals cannot convert fatty acid into glucose. In contrast, Plants have these two additional enzymes, isocitrate lyase and malate synthase, that enables them to convert the carbon atom of acetyl and coenzyme A into oxaloacetate. This is accomplished by glyoxylate pathway. This is the advantage that glyoxylate pathway offers to plants, to algae, to bacteria over the animals. Glyoxylate pathway is a route involving enzymes of both the mitochondria and glyoxysome. Glyoxysome is actually a specialized membranous plant 
organelle. Now, with this, I would like to review the pathway again. The glyoxylate pathway occurs only in plants but not in animals. It converts the acetyl coenzyme A to glyoxylate, which condenses with malate to give oxaloacetate. The oxaloacetate is used for the production of glucose in gluconeogenesis. Thus, plants can convert acetyl coenzyme A to glucose by glycose glyoxylate pathway. Let's have a review of the reactions that are involved in the glyoxylate pathway. Mitochondrial oxaloacetate is converted to aspartate and transported to glyoxysomes. Now, this aspartate in glyoxysome is reconverted to oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate is condensed with acetyl coenzyme A to form citrate, which is then isomerized to isocitrate. Isocitrate is cleaved to succinate and glyoxylate by glyoxysomal isocitrate lyase. Glyoxylate is condensed with acetyl coenzyme A to produce malate by glyoxysomal malate synthesis. Malate is transported in cytoplasm and is oxidized by the cytosol malate dehydrogenase to give oxaloacetate which enters the gluconeogenesis to produce glucose. Succinate is transported to mitochondria and is entered into the citric acid cycle. In the citric acid cycle, conversion of isocitrate to succinate produces 2 carbon dioxide. Isocitrate is 6 carbon while the succinate is 4 carbon. On the other hand, in the glyoxylate pathway, conversion of isocitrate to succinate produces glyoxylate. Thus, glyoxylate pathway results in the net conversion of acetyl coenzyme A to glyoxylate instead of 2 carbon dioxide. This glyoxylate then enters into the gluconeogenesis. While if acetyl coenzyme A enters into the citric acid cycle, it produces carbon dioxide, 2 carbon dioxides, 2 NADH and GTP. And this NADH will enter into the oxidative phosphorylation. I think you might, must have must be remembering the oxidative phosphorylation where NADH enters into the through the electron transport chain. The electron carrier transports the electron and generates the proton motor force which in turn helps in the production of ATP. So in one case, if the organism follows the glyoxylate pathway, it will produce the glyoxylate and it goes to the gluconeogenesis. While in the case of the citric acid, if acetyl coenzyme enters into the citric acid, it produces 2 carbon dioxide, 2 NADH plus GTP. Eventually, this NADH gives, 2 NADH will give 6 ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. The net reaction of a glyoxylate pathway is 2 acetyl coenzyme plus 2 NAD plus 2 FAD will give oxaloacetate plus 2 coenzyme plus 2 NADH plus FADH2 plus 2 hydrogen ion. While the net reaction of the citric acid cycle is 2 acetyl coenzyme A plus 6 NAD plus 2 FAD plus 2 GDP plus inorganic phosphate will give 4 carbon dioxide, 2 coenzyme A plus 6 NADH plus 2 FADH2 plus 2 GTP plus 6 hydrogen ions. Germinating seeds plant use the glyoxylate pathway to convert their stored triacylglycerol to glucose. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Glyoxylate cycle plays a crucial role in all major domains that is plant, fungi as well as bacteria. As we know that there is a controversy with respect to whether it is there in animal model or not. But certainly it plays a very important role in plants, fungi as well as bacteria. Now within the plants, it occurs in glyoxysomes. In the glyoxylate cycle, the D, two decarboxylation steps of the TCA cycle are skipped as we earlier 
डिस्कस दैट द डी कार्बोक्सिलेशन स्टेप्स ऑफ द टी सी एस साइकिल इज बाईपास्ट ओके एंड दिस बाईपास स्कीप स्टेप्स ऑफ द डी कार्बोक्सिलेशन इज द एंट्री पॉइंट ऑफ अ सेकेंड मोलिक्यूल ऑफ एसिटल कॉन्जम ए दैट इज क्रिएटेड इन दिस मैनर प्लांट्स आर एबल टू यूज टू मोलिक्यूल्स ऑफ एसिटल कॉन्जम ए फॉर द नेट सिंथेसिस ऑफ वन सी फोर ऑफ द टी सी ए साइकिल इंटरमीडिएट्स ग्लायक्सीट साइकिल प्ले एन इम्पोर्टेंट रोल ड्यूरिंग द प्लांट सीडलिंग्स एज यू नो दैट द सीड्स ड्यूरिंग द सीडलिंग डज नॉट कैरी आउट द फोटो सिंथेसिस मीन्स they cannot synthesize the energy they cannot synthesize the energy by their own they depend on other sources they are not autotrophic at that particular point since they are not able to carry out the photosynthesis and that's why this glyoxylate cycle is very important for the seedlings during the seed germination plants converts store lipid molecule into carbohydrate by using the glyoxylate cycle so they utilize the stored lipid which is present in the seeds during seed germination as i said photosynthesis is not operating so role of glyoxylate is very important it enables plants to use acetate as a carbon and energy source acetate that is a two carbon compound which is utilized by the plant as a source of energy do remember this at this particular point during the seedlings plants do not do the photosynthesis so they do not have outside source from the sunlight they cannot synthesize their own energy so they are dependent on the other mechanism for the source of energy similarly in fungi it plays very important role in the pathogenesis in certain literatures you will find that the glyoxylate cycle is correlated with the pathogenesis of fungi it was observed that concentration of the isocitrate lyase and malate synthase is significantly increased during the pathogenesis so indirectly it tell us that this particular glyoxylate cycle is very important for the pathogenesis of the fungi but yet we are not able to identify the exact correlation that exists between the enzymes of this glyoxylate cycle and the pathogenesis of fungi so exact correlation is still not understood to us now let's try to explore the role of glyoxylate cycle in the bacteria the bacteria the prokaryotes means they do not have intracellular organelles this bacteria the glyoxylate cycle for them is very important many bacteria have enzymes of the glyoxylate and citric acid cycle in the cytoplasm so enzymes of the citric acid cycle as well as the glyoxylate cycle both are there in the cytoplasm it enables them to grow on acetate as their sole carbon source and energy source so this bacteria can grow on the presence of only acetate as a carbon source if they have the enzymes of glyoxylate cycles succinate which is released from the mid cycle can be converted into carbohydrate by a combination of the citric acid cycle and gluconeogenesis so this succinate that is released during the cycle can be converted into carbohydrate by the process called gluconeogenesis don't get confused over here the citric acid cycle enzymes are also present in the cytoplasm the enzymes of the glyoxylate cycle is also present in the cytoplasm so this is possible thus organism with a glyoxylate cycle gain a metabolic versatility they gain a metabolic diversity they can use many different compound as a source of energy 
So that's why this metabolic versatility is very important and that is there with the bacteria, that is there with the fungi due to the presence of this glyoxylate cycle. Glyoxylate bypass explains the ability of bacteria, yeast and other microorganisms to utilize acetate as a sole source of carbon for their growth. It plays an important role in pathogenesis of bacteria. It was observed that concentration of isocitrate lyase and malate synthesis is significantly increased during this pathogenesis as we discussed the same in the fungi. Thank you very much.